Steve, I know people listening can't see this, but do you see what I'm wearing? This beautiful sweatshirt? That, that bright yellow? Let me tell you something about this sweatshirt. This is the lucky sweatshirt. This is the Ooh. shirt I wore to WVU for the last home game with K-State, K and we won. This sweatshirt is on now, and it will be on my body until we win the national championship or get bumped out, whichever comes first. Um, and guess where I got it? Book exchange. Yeah, you did. Went to the store, met Joey. They worked there. Uh, he was super cool. Listened to the show. Uh, everybody there was, you know, I said, hey, can I use uh, my, my, my show's uh, uh, code, Burning Couch, for 25% off? And they said, sure you can. Here's, we got a list of a few shows, and you're one of them. And you, let, we want to say hi to you. Very nice people there, Steve. Beautiful people. Beautiful people at the Book Exchange. Family owned, lots of stuff. I'm always overwhelmed. I will say this. If you're wanting a JT Daniels t-shirt, you can get one for like two bucks right there. They, they're, they're, it's on their like 75% off rack. So maybe it's a collector's item. I don't know. But what you know, Maddie, once a mountaineer, always a mountaineer. So that $2 you're saving, hey, 25% off of that is damn near free. That is a free shirt. Uh, getting a Steve Slayton jersey a little bit more, but you'll get 25% off when you use the code burning couch. That's burning couch. Use it at the book exchange online, in person, anywhere they're at. They will help you out. Get your NCAA gear there. The book exchange, burning couch, 25% off. Thanks. And we are back, NCAA bound, WVU. We are excited. I'm Maddie Stout, and with me, as always, the man, the myth, the legend, Steve Slayton. How are you, Steve? I'm doing well, Matthew. I'm, I'm, I'm happy you're safe from your travels and back to bring back what the people need for this burning pod. I'm really glad to not be traveling. I, was, I went to WVU for the game and then turned right around to Vegas for a, a work trip. I don't like Vegas, man. I used to love Vegas. It's not my it's not my place anymore. I think um, Vegas is for a certain uh, budget. People who have a certain budget for Vegas enjoy it. Budget, you know, if you like to, you like to, you know, be one of the douchebags at the craps tables. Yeah, that's just not me. Uh, I do play roulette. I won a thousand dollars playing roulette with two hundred dollar bet. So I felt good about that. But anyway, uh, it's good to be back. But that – can I just tell you what it, how great it was to go back in, to the Coliseum for the first time in years? Uh, absolutely amazing. Got to go down on the court with Tony Carita before the game. Got to hang out with Mike Gansey for a few minutes, which – Your man crush? <laughs> my total man crush. And it was so hard not to be like – so it was going really good, Steve. We're talking and everything. And then I'm like, you know, I do a podcast with Steve Slayton and maybe we can get you on sometime. And I got that look that I've given people, which is, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> let, me, let me check my calendar. Yeah. Come on. Mike, Gansy, you're not that big. You know, come on. You're, you're, you know, you're, but he was there scouting, you know, for NBA. Uh, and we uh, shall fill your request for a Mike, a Mike Gansy spot on the show. Definitely sure. Uh, I think even before you told me, before you went, I think I sent you a picture of me and Mike Gansey from uh, 2018 when we got inducted into the Hall of Fame. So there's the end right there. See, you need to be reaching out to Mike Gansey. If you would have been down there and said that, he would have said, Steve, give me your phone number. I'll, I'll, I'll be there next week. Yeah, I, I feel like it might be hard for another Mountaineer to say no to me. But. I think it'd be very hard for them. Uh, just so you know, we haven't had a lot of guests. And let me tell you why. Because we have stuff to talk about right now. But after basketball, it's pretty slim picking. So we'll have a lot of guests on after basketball season. <laughs> oh, man. But that team, did you watch that that last home game? It was beautiful. Yeah, I did, I did get a chance to watch it. And I think that – I don't know how selection works, but I think that may have helped us solidify our spot into – the tournament against one of the schools I hate the fucking most. <laughs> Which we will talk about in a second. Uh, it was great to see Emmett Matthews. Uh, just do, do what you should do on senior night. Just be a senior, do amazing things on the court and, and make the fans just, you know, he's an all time great West Virginia from now on. Like Emmett Matthews, he's in that, he's in that, that, that Gansey pit snoggle, 
mm-hmm. uh, you know, those, those guys that have played in the past that, you know, uh, you know, Gabe, um, but, uh, you know, great night, you know, for somebody that's only played for a year, Stevenson, you could tell, I, you know, that the guy probably wishes he would have just been at West Virginia the whole time, but, uh, but they did, uh, you know, I was in Vegas, watched the first round and then the Kansas game, I kind of knew we wouldn't have any energy for that game. I mean, they, they've been, they've been, that was a rough schedule headed into that game. So. Well, I think we've been speaking about the big 12 all year is that big 12 is it's a tough conference, and even to play in a conference championship or even be in that, like it's we got some dogs. Even now, um, what we're seated at, you know, we got a dog in Alabama to see because I feel us squeaking, not even squeaking. I feel us us dominating Maryland as we always do, but then Alabama is going to be a tough challenge. But hey, you know, my thoughts are going into the tournament, which I'm glad we're in the South. That means we can have some fans go, which is great. You know, we do good when we have fans there. Um, you know, I like I like our I like our first round seating. But what I like even more going to this tournament uh has been all the shit talk going from pit fans <laughs> who actually think they have a better team than us. They actually think that. They they're like, well, do we get seated? I mean, Twitter has been I wouldn't know I have to be on by the way, still don't have my Twitter. Thank you, fucking Elon Musk. Um, but Man, they were they were just crap talking, dude. They were and, and they just got thrown down by the WVU fans. Like, oh yeah, didn't we beat you by thirty at home? Oh yeah, we did. And they're I, I, uh, I hope so badly they because they were all bragging they got in the tournament. I'm like, you didn't get in the tournament yet. You're playing. That doesn't count. <laughs> well, I think the crazy thing is that all fans have is that um, what I would see would all will be haunted by is thirteen eleven. 13-9, whatever the score was, is that that's, that's the only thing they have to bring up anytime. And and, and a- you can't hold your head on that. But hey, listen, that's my time. Years ago, now, hey, what West Virginia doing? What is Pitt doing? Is that it's not gonna hold you to anybody anymore. And we're talking basketball here. Basketball, basketball. There's never been a competition there. We've always been better than Pitt. There might have been some years where they were better, but not a lot, a lot. Um, but I hope so badly they lose going into that tournament. I had one guy get on 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 us on Burning Couch Twitter. You can tell when I'm on it because all of a sudden it's like shit talk. Uh, <laughs> uh, and the W. And I love our fans. They just completely. Uh, you know, went in and and just shut them down. They shut down the pit fans very quickly. They just they they really do. And uh, and while they were on there, I guess they they all saw our wonderful uh, burning couch uh, code for book exchange. By the way, twenty five percent off. By the way, I'm wearing the shirt right now that I wore, and I got it the book exchange the day the day before the home game. I'm wear I've worn it it basically every day. It's it's it, I didn't wear it at Kansas because I was in and it was in Vegas and I was at a conference. That's why we lost. So this thing's never coming off. Uh, Pitt is not even our little brother. It's like a little stepsisters. You know what happened to little stepsisters? Yeah, I would say maybe Marshall was a stepsister, and we I think Pitt could be a little brother. But uh, yeah, uh, we'll see what happens tournament time. I mean, this is when it all comes out. I mean, I've been filling my bracket out. I fill out. Probably six. I've got two that I play that are uh, one. I do two, four, and it's a big, big one. It's like there's like 260 people. The big prize is like $50,000. That's my main one. And then I've got one I do with 10 guys who a lot of them went to Syracuse. So it's been fun making fun of them for not making the tournament. <laughs> and now that we have the most active wins of any coach. Isn't Jim, Jim Burheim stepping down? Jim Bay- Bayheim, yeah, you've retired. He's done. It was weird, dude. It was weird. It is, uh, it's, it's weird yeah. to see the word, or knowing where you grew up, the era you grew in, era I grew up, to see now these coaches fading out of it and being replaced. Because even with um, North Carolina and Duke, it's been faded out fa- fairly. Oh, yeah. North Carolina is like, we are not taking uh, a bid to the NIT. It's not, we're, we're not, they're not worthy of us. I'm like, dude, you're, let your players play one more tournament, your seniors and stuff. That that's just bullshit. I, that is some elitist crap there. I, I don't get that, but yeah, they, they're not going to play in the NIT. I agree that, that as it is elitist to where in a sense of you're playing basketball, winning basketball, 
means winning basketball. It doesn't matter where you're at. If you're not in the tournament, you're not in the tournament. But playing in NIT is still respectable to win still at the same day. And don't forget, the year we won the NIT, the next year we went to the Final Four. So shut up about the NIT. Like, it's it's not that – it's it's what it is. It's, it's the loser bracket, but it's still playing postseason, and fans like to watch games. So I don't know. Um, but let's talk first round because we are playing a team that you have a personal dislike for. And then I guess and, uh, I do too. My mom went there. She went to Maryland. But guess what? Bigger WVU fan than Maryland fan. See, she was smart. She made the switch. Uh, <laughs> quick summary for people like our producer that don't know your, your the, the background with Maryland. Steve. Uh, quick summary. They fucked me over because they thought they had somebody better. And they paid for it. Exactly. I mean, you should be thanking them. I, I, I do thank them. I thank them all the time. <laughs> I'm, appreciative. I'm appreciative. You know, it's funny. My mom's been going through emails, clearing emails since she's been sending me chronological order of uh, different things of from my past of how it happened. Well, not how it happened, but what I committed to through high school and stuff like that. And it's like, I'm very appreciative of what happened, what, what I went through because I found a loyal home to go home to. It's, um, uh, it's like the old, there's a Garth Brooks song called unanswered prayers. Go listen to it. People. I'm not a, I'm not a country guy at all. Not at all. But that's that song's a good one about that kind of thing. So let me talk to you about uh, this Maryland team because I didn't know much about them either. So uh, they have a net ranking of 31, not too bad. Ken Palm of 22. Uh, they've they've got three quad one wins, um, three out of ten. Offense is efficiency ranking 35. Defense is efficiency ranking 33. Now, on the flip side, West Virginia one and a half point favorite. Net ranking 25, Ken Palm ranking 17. How are we at ninth and they're eighth? Uh, quad one record six and 13, West Virginia. Uh, offensive efficiency ranking 15, defensive efficiency ranking 52. But that was because of the beginning of the season. I don't know how we lose this first round. Um, I think it well, any game you lose, you lose focus of on a task at hand. I think to where, um, Kansas, Kansas, the second time we played around, it was a different taste in the mouth. Kansas was a little bit more prepared in my eyes to play. But I feel like for this game coming up to where we know it's a tournament, to knowing you need to make a run. It's, it's not – it's every Sunday, it's every Saturday, it's every – you know, like I said, we, every, we talk about every Sunday. But this is a game to where it's never looked past to, the first, especially the first game, because – they're going to keep coming in drills. You don't know who your opponent is because it's never a given. This is only the time that you know who you're playing against coming into the start of rankings. That's a good point. I, the mistake would be for the team to start looking ahead at Alabama, who, by the way, um, I believe still have a uh, a criminal uh, playing on the court, uh, an accessory to a murder, correct? Is he still playing? Um, he may not be playing coming up. I feel like they, they might be. I think no, no. I, is he still on the team? I think he is. I don't know, Vince. You're you're somewhere. Look that up. See if see if uh, Mr. Accessory to a Murder is still on the team, which he shouldn't be. Actually, that whole effing program should have been suspended this year for all that shit. Should have been suspended. Anyway, I'm not worried. I think we can beat them if we play them. Um, I don't think. I, I mean, I just look at what Oklahoma did to them. Oklahoma wiped the court with them. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the biggest thing about this tournament. Yeah, the biggest thing about the tournament is not. Listen, we, we talk about Cinderella, Cinderella, Cinderella's every year. It's not a given because a style of play. I think, uh, mm-hmm. hey, Big 12 is always fast and probably the most dominant uh, conference in the league to be. But, hey, we in a conference, we've done well out of conference, different teams. So, listen, I'm always going to give us hope. I'm always going to believe in us to do well. And – as fans, we should always have that mindset. It's hard for me with doing my bracket, okay? Because they have a bracket where I have us uh, beating Alabama. But then after that, it's like, where do we stop? Because the next team's up, 
we should win. Uh, so I'll tell you what I got here. I, I'll, uh, actually, here's what we'll do. We're going to take our break so we can play some fine words about the wonderful book exchange, our A number one sponsor. By the way, Miguel Sanchez, have you bought anything yet? Has anybody bought anything yet? You better be. I'm not the only one buying stuff. Uh, you better buy some stuff, people. Just buy something. 25% off. Get a hat. It's like 12 bucks after the discount. It's free. My brother was, he was like, really? 25% off? I'm like, yeah, man. It's 25% off. Go use it. So anyway, that, it's, that ad is coming up in a second. This isn't the ad. This is me talking about the ad. On the other side, uh, I want to I want to go through uh, what I have for for my for my bracket and who I think are going to be upsets and see what you think. And then I believe we have a game that Young Vince has put together for us, which will be fun. That's on the other side. You're listening to Burning Couch from Jam Street Media. <laughs> <laughs> 